Hello, I'm Alexis, aka The Sloth Room, and I'm here today to do a wrap up for the first five audiobooks I listened to in 2018. this video idea from Trina over between chapters so I will link her playlist to her audio reviews down below. Um, I listen on average to about two to three audiobooks every month so I wanted a video where I could discuss the actual audiobooks themselves um, apart from like the book because I just don't have time to do that in my wrap-ups um, and sometimes I want to be able to talk about how I felt about the narration and how I felt it affected my enjoyment of the story stuff like that and I will say I'm a very picky audiobook listener. I can't just listen to any audiobook. I have to like what I hear in the sample. So you'll probably never hear me say I hated an audiobook, but I can definitely say like whether or not I feel like the narrator didn't do this story justice, that kind of thing. So yeah, anyway, we'll get into it. So the first audiobook I listened to in 2018 was The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This audiobook was narrated by Jim Dale. For those of you who don't know, Jim Dale is the one who does all of the US audiobooks for Harry Potter. Um, so he's quite well known for that. Um, and he, of course, did the narration for The Night Circus. Um, I'll be honest, I would have DNF'd this book if I wouldn't have picked it up on audio. Um, the only reason I finished it was because uh, I could read it on audio rather than actually having to read it. Um, I did do an entire review for this book that I'll link down below in case you want to know my thoughts. But for me, the audiobook worked. I was listening to it on audio so I could kind of zone out on all of the absolutely useless descriptions that are in this book. I feel like Jim Dale's voice works really well for this story because he does kind of, you know, he's an older man. So his voice, I feel like, fits the kind of tone and the time period and the storyteller-esque style of storytelling in this book, I feel like his voice works really well for. Um, I would give his narrations probably a 4 out of 5, um, just because I don't feel like he really differentiated between some of the characters. I feel like all of the female characters sounded alike and all the male characters sounded alike, so like for that reason there really wasn't like a super super strong effort I feel like put into differentiating every character from another. And the next book I mentioned has set the standard for that for me, so like if things don't meet that level I'm like it can't be a 5. So I would give this a 4 out of 5. I definitely think that his narration does this story well, especially if you're having trouble reading it like physically like I was, I would recommend the audiobook. The next audiobook I listened to was of course my favorite read in January and it's also my favorite audiobooks that I've ever listened to because Oh boy. And that is, of course, A Lair of Dreams by Liva Bray. This is narrated by January Lavoy. I give her audio readings, her narrations for these books, 5 out of 5 stars. Um, her narration for The Diviners was 5 out of 5. Her narration for Lair of Dreams was 5 out of 5. Honestly, baffling to me that all of the voices January Lavoy does come from one person because they don't sound like it. When you're listening to the story, they don't, it doesn't sound like it's one person in an audio booth recording this entire book by herself. It just, it's so crazy how different each of the voices she does are. And like, I'm not kidding you, every character in this has a different voice, you know? I don't need to be told by the author who's speaking to know who's speaking. When January Lavoy is narrating, I can tell when it's Theta, when it's Memphis, when it's Evie, when it's Sam. Like, I know because she does such a distinct voice and a distinct accent almost for every single character in this book. But I also just feel like January Lavoie's voice fits the supernatural and kind of creepy quality that this book has, the series has. Um, even when she's just reading the prose, I feel like the quality of her voice fits the feeling and the mood of the book so well. Um, I also want to give her props because there's a lot of songs and poems and stuff incorporated into these books and she sings every song that's in this book. Every single one of them. She sings it, she makes up her own melodies for them, you know, she does it in the 1920s style that obviously fits the setting of the story. So like, she is like the top tier standard of audiobooks for me. So like, it has to be on par with January Lavoie to get a 5 because like she kills the audiobooks for these like so much. The next audiobook I listened to after that was actually a reread for me and that was Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Michael Crouch and I would give his narration about a 3 out of 5. Um, he did a very distinct voice for Simon and obviously Simon is narrating the book in first person and so like he did a very distinct which I feel like is a very teenage boy voice for Simon and that worked. 
Um, for me, I don't feel like he really did a different voice for any other character. Um, I kind of feel like every other character's voice sounded the same, and, and they all felt really over dramatized. Like, even Simon's, like, his narration for Simon was really dramatic, I feel like, and I feel like that extended to every character in the book. So, that didn't necessarily work for me. I still would recommend this, especially because it's a very short audiobook. It's obviously a very short book, and I did think it was kind of funny to hear, like, some of Simon's lines and some of his thoughts actually read out loud. And I will commend Michael Crouch for this. He does this one thing where sometimes when Simon's thinking certain thoughts, he kind of says them in a whisper. When Simon's thinking, like, certain things, when he's like, you know, am I in love with Blue, he would, like, whisper them. And I do feel like that did add a really nice quality to the actual, like, storytelling. Um, not the best audiobook I've ever listened to, but certainly not the worst. And after that, I listened to The Fifth Season, which was read by Robin Miles, and I really, really liked this audiobook. I said it in my February wrap-up, um, which I'll also link down below, that I don't know that I necessarily would have loved this book if I had read it physically, as opposed to listening to it on audiobook, because I do feel like Robin Miles did a really good job, you know, pacing the story well with her voice to not make it, like, overwhelming for me, because it is a, a brand new fantasy world that I had no prior knowledge of. Robin Miles has a very, very smooth and easy voice to listen to, and I feel like that helped me personally to absorb what was going on, because, like, I kind of got lost in her voice a little bit, but that helped me because then I was really immersed in the story and the world building, and the world building is my favorite part of the book. She did do voices for different characters, which I appreciate. Um, I, I think there were definitely places where they overlapped, but there really aren't that many speaking characters, to be honest, in the fifth season, and so I felt like her differentiation for voices was solid. I feel like she did a really good job portraying emotion in her voice during certain scenes, too. There were definitely scenes where the characters were experiencing emotional things, or times when they were curious, or times when they were angry, and I definitely felt like I was getting those emotions from Robin Miles' narration. Um, so I do definitely think this is a really good audiobook. I would probably give this audiobook a 4 or 4.5. Um, however, if you're someone who's not used to reading fantasy or if you're someone who has hard time with world building, um, I wouldn't recommend this book just because this book does have a lot of world building in it. Um, and so I think you might find it difficult if you're not an avid audiobook listener or if you're not an avid fantasy reader. Um, so just be weary about that. This one really, really worked for me, but for those reasons, it may not work for you. The last audiobook I'm going to mention was actually a DNF of mine in February, and that was The Sellout by Paul Beatty, read by Prentice Onayemi. Um, I really, really liked Onayemi's narration. He definitely has a very, 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 very nice voice to listen to, and I feel like his voice is really captivating in that like you want to listen to what he says. The book itself didn't really work for me. Um, I feel like the author has a very crass way of writing and the narrator definitely committed to that, you know. He didn't shy away from saying a lot of the kind of vulgar things that the book covers, which for me as an audiobook I feel like did lessen my enjoyment and my feelings towards the book because I was kind of hearing these really vulgar things just like said in my ear, which was kind of uncomfortable. Um, though I think the intent of the book in general is to make you uncomfortable. Um, so like, on that front it was successful. <laughs> but I do think the narrator is very good. Um, I didn't really read enough of the book, I feel like, to get a good grasp of whether or not the narrator was doing a good job with doing different voices, because I had really only heard like three characters really have speaking parts, you know, differently voiced, um, but there really weren't that many characters for me to judge like, you know, what the narrator's limit was for differentiating for voices. Um, but I, I mean, I would recommend anything else this narrator reads because like I said, I think they have a very nice voice, a very intriguing voice that makes you want to listen to what they have to say. Um, so I would give their narration what I read of it, you know, like a 3.5 4 stars just because again like I didn't listen to the entire book. Alrighty guys, so those were the first five audiobooks I listened to in 2018. I definitely had some ones I thought were very successful. Um, I'm very excited to do my next one of these because I've got a couple of audiobooks lined up that I think I'm really going to like the narration for. 
so I'm really excited to do the next one of these when I check in in two months or whatever. <laughs> I would absolutely love to know what audiobooks you guys have been recently listening to or what audiobooks you strongly recommend. If you like what I do, I upload videos on Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, and I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye!